Hello and welcome. I'm your host, David Hoffman. This is the first episode in a series about using LED dot matrix displays in your projects. We'll begin by designing code to operate a single dot matrix display, and then in later episodes, we'll add additional dot matrix displays to the circuit. And as always, you can download the code as well as a schematic for this exercise from my website, magidavid.com. Okay, let's get started. Here we have the MCU, and in this case I'm using Neolox Mini 28A. And here we have two 5x7 dot matrix display modules. For now, only the first display module is wired up to the MCU, but we'll be adding the second display into the circuit in a later episode. The resistors, located here, are 390 ohms and keep the current at a safe level for both the MCU and the display module. Okay, let's test the display with a simple program. We'll be starting with the code from the previous assembly language programming episode, since it has some code we'll be reusing. To have a little fun, let's add the following line to the start routine. Now, compile the program and then program the MCU. You'll see a cool effect. Since we only added the one line of code, the old code is operating and slowly increasing and decreasing two LEDs. Okay, let me show you a quick trick to hang on to old code instead of just deleting it. Since I plan on reusing this fade control later on, but I'm not sure where it's going to go yet, I'm just going to copy it over to another file for safekeeping. Now let's create a new file and then save it in the same directory as the project. Let's call the file oldcode.asm. Now cut all the code in the main routine and paste it into the old code file and then save that file. The code is removed from our current project, but it's tucked away safely for later use. Now it's time to create some labels. First get rid of the existing labels and then add the following labels to the header section of the file. Okay, then remove the BitClearF port A7 and then add the following code. These first two lines just set up port B as a digital input output port adverse to an analog input port. Then we configure port B as an output port and put all ones on that port. Okay, remove the line call LED underscore update from the routine LED pause and change the go to dollar sign minus two to go to LED pause. Okay, in the main routine we want to add the following code. Let's take a look at this code and cover exactly what's going on. Whenever we set a bit on a port to zero, it effectively becomes a route to ground. We can use this to turn on and off rows as we wish. So, by setting dot row 5 high, we cut off the path to ground and this turns off that row. So, these first two lines turn off row 5 and then turn on row 1. We then pause to give the dots time to shine. And then we turn the row off and move on to the next one. The rest of the code is doing the same thing, just for different rows on the display. This code, in essence, is only turning on one row at a time, but doing it so fast that we are unable to see it and the display looks like all the dots are on at the same time. Now, since we removed the two labels defining the old LED port in bits, we need to comment out this code so we can compile without getting any errors. Okay. Let's compile the code and then program the MCU and see what happens. Ah, there's a beautiful sight. All the LEDs in the display are lighting up, so we know the display is working properly. Now we need to move forward and start setting up code to actually display a symbol 
on the LED matrix. Let's begin by defining variables we are going to need. Add the following lines above the LED underscore bar UData share section. Now, let's change the LED underscore bar section to Let's modify the LED underscore update routine to handle the dot matrix display. First, let's rename the routine to DMD update. And then change the header to dot matrix display update. Now, add the following code. Okay, let's create the routine to update the display port. So let's add the following code. And let's change the LED pause routine to Now, let's clear out the main routine except for the first and last lines and add the following code. And we also need to update these routines. Now we can get rid of these two lines here. Okay, let's compile and program the MCU. The bottom row on the dot matrix display should light up, and it does. Now that we know the display routine is working, let's go ahead and add in code to handle the other rows. Now let's copy this block of code and paste it. Change the DMD underscore display to DMD underscore display plus one and change the dot underscore row 1 to underscore row 2 and change the dot underscore row 5 to dot underscore row 1. Now let's copy this block of code and we're going to paste it three times. And we'll want to change this to 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, and five. Okay, let's compile, program the MCU, and run the program. As you can see, all the rows are working now, but since we didn't specify values for rows two through five, the data being displayed is random. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's create a new subroutine that will fill in our memory with characters that are useful. Let's call it DMD underscore character one and let's go ahead and put it at the end of our program. The following code will display a 1 and a 0 on the display. Now we also need to replace these two lines in our main routine with call dmd underscore character 1. So let's go ahead and compile program And there it is, a 1 and a 0 on the display. Oh, I love it when a program comes together. Now, as you can see, it's going to take a lot of character definitions to generate all the characters in the ASCII chart. In the next episode, we'll add the code to define the ASCII characters and add code to look up the data depending on what character we want to display. I hope you found this episode of Assembly Language Programming helpful, and be sure to check out these other episodes. Thanks for watching. Thank you.